So my name is John Coles. I'm a senior research scientist um, and program manager at Kubrick. I primarily work in the DOD and Intel space. So Dale was talking earlier about the importance of technologies and capabilities coming from outside to disrupt what we're doing and fundamentally transform our approach. And um, as I was on the plane flying here, I was in California for the Applied Artificial Intelligence Summit for the US Navy. And um, I was on a panel, and, and two days later, um, somebody came up and was talking about the problem of fighter pilot fr fatigue and trying to predict fighter pilot fatigue. And I looked at their approach, and what we've begun to do at the center is actually more advanced than what they're trying to do today. And so I went and talked to them, and they said, oh, so are you putting sensors on the kids, and how are you monitoring everything? And I said, how much sleep are your pilots getting in the preceding four days? Have they had a, a good BM in the last couple days? What are they eating? How are they exercising? Um, we have this tendency across the space of there's a problem, we have a pill for that. We have a technology that can monitor that. And so the opportunity here is really to take the data um, that the center has captured and continues to leverage it to improve our understanding and then expand it. And so I'll talk about that today. Um, I also serve as the director of the data analytics and digital health lab um, at TCFD. So our, our mantra and our approach to the problem of data and data analytics is that we study the person and then connect new information keeping the person at the center of analysis instead of the problem. This idea that we have a problem, we get lots of data, and then hopefully it helps the person, we really flip that on its head and at the center have focused on the people first, connecting information around them to get an understanding of context and what's important to actually changing outcome. Um, right now, we're crushed by complexity, and uh, Terry talked about this earlier, and we've had a theme of complexity. Um, and one of the kids, just briefly, that came to the center several years ago, um, Kevin, he, he regressed at the age of two, um, had multiple interventions and specialists with no improvement, and at, by the time he was in school, he was regularly restrained to help manage elopement and other major adverse behaviors, and was finally placed at the center at TCFD. And so you guys are familiar with TCFD and the tremendous impact that the care team, the medical team, the pharmacy team, um, the, the whole environment tremendously impacted um, Kevin and his family, and he was able to go on vacation with his family again, and the elopement behavior is reduced, and there's tremendous improvement. And so I, my role is to try and help fit an understanding of what's happening, why it's happening, and how we can leverage the information gathered from all of this and complete this care paradigm with the analytic team. Um, and so I focus on how can we complete that data picture? How can we collect information about the individual from their environment, their context, and pull it all together in a way that makes sense? Um, and so we've put together a TCFD data repository. We continue along this path of keeping the person at the center and connecting information. And I was just speaking with some of my colleagues who spoke earlier today about the importance of getting more information, connecting information from the Cleveland Clinic and from uh, the Mind Body Institute, and building a holistic picture of our kids, our adults, and our community. So what we do is we take that information and we um, take a proactive approach to data capture, processing, and proactive monitoring and intervention. And that helps complete that care loop, where data is no longer a thing that we just capture and it sits, and then we discover that we had a problem before. To actually make that information actionable, we need to understand the warnings and indicators that lead up to those behaviors, and that is a tremendously personalized process. Um, I, Terry spoke earlier about the autisms and the, the need to understand different complexity with different individuals, and that's a huge part of what we're doing and why we're doing it. So at the center, we've taken this approach of the healthy six, and Terry spoke about several kids that have been 
positively impacted this, that have seen a transformation. Um, and it's got these overarching components for environment, eating, energy regulation, emotional, and we've heard many of these facets. The challenge comes when we talk about, okay, we can do this well, but how do we customize it to the individual even more? How do we take it outside of the walls of TCFD and bring it to other centers in New York State? How do we change the paradigm in preschools and kindergarten programs and even in other long-term care settings? How do we take the general program, customize it, and choose the right path for the right individual? And so our approach has been to start to leverage all of this data to try and understand how we can help the individual independent of their environment and transfer the knowledge that we've gained here to take it out beyond our walls. Um, and so what we've done is take each of those data elements and provide context for what are the driving factors behind current behavior and forward-looking behavior. We start with the individual and build multi-year models for that person to understand not where do they fit in the uh, DSM-5 criteria, but where do they fit relative to themselves today and how will that impact tomorrow and how can we help that person and their care team. And so what we've been working on over the last year is putting together a summary and a prospective look of what risks we may have in the coming 24 hours. Um, and so from that approach, we start to pull in. So we've got a yellow summary for today. And the challenge is, OK, we've got an 81% likelihood of having a behavior. Now, I, I put this 81% in there. And I want to stop for a minute. How many of you click on all of the advertisements that are targeted for you in your web browser. They're 99% they're just what you need at that moment. Those, that is the state of the art in much of the field of analytics and machine learning today, is that you can get away with being about 2 to 4% right. Nobody watches all the movies that Netflix provides you in exactly the order that it recommends them. And so when we think about this idea of understanding the individual and supporting the individual, we need to recognize that that state of the art in industry today has resulted from billions of dollars of investment to get to a 2 to 4% accurate model. And so what we're doing is trying to provide the tools and an understanding into why we made that recommendation so that instead of it just being you know what, we're, we're better than Netflix and have 90% perfect accuracy. Give us a couple billion dollars in 10 years and we'll see how far we can get. Um, but the opportunity here is to give a set of driving factors. Here's why we made that assessment. Here's what we're seeing today. Um, and how might you be able to change those factors to help this individual. And so here in this example, we focused on environmental distractions, on getting them a little bit more sleep, and on GI and BM. The microbiome is a huge portion of this. The exercise and the sleep components are huge. And so we've focused in on this idea of providing the driving set of factors that made this prediction and how can you use that today. Now the question comes then, OK, as we begin to do this, and we're just scratching the surface today at TCFD, we've seen tremendous progress. We're very excited. Let's say we get, we continue to do better and better. How do we take this change that we've seen in one individual, that we are seeing in groups of individuals and in the TCFD population, how do we get it beyond TCFD? And so there are three things that I want to highlight today. Um, the first is accessible mechanisms. So let's say we can, we can understand a subset of people that will benefit from improved eating, energy, and emotional regulation. How do we get that out into the schools, into the environment? Just like John talked about, the exercise. We, I at least, many of us exercise less than we know that, than we should. 
So how can we build tools that improve the overall paradigm when we as healthy individuals aren't necessarily following the rules as they are today? How can we change the paradigm for our kids and take the lessons learned for this really well studied and cared for population and broaden them out? And I think it comes through education. It comes through building additional models, understanding what the autisms are from a symptomatic and a care standpoint so that we aren't providing perfect machine learning models to everybody. We're providing the driving factors for this subset of individuals and working with psychiatrists and educators to understand how to screen people effectively for those things. And that's something that the center is working on over the center of excellence um, work over the coming years. How do we take the screening tools that we've begun to see used effectively and get them out into the, into the general community? How can we do that well? The second thing is accessible innovation. Um, I mentioned that you know, they're, they're putting a huge number of sensors and alerts and all kinds of stuff on fighter pilots and soldiers to understand fatigue and understand exhaustion. How do we take the simpler inter interventions and innovations that we've found at the center and scale them? How do we find the right mechanism and the right innovations to broaden out? Just like with that one individual that I spoke to, if they had the understanding that exercise is important for their fighter pilot population, they would look at, did they just get enough exercise the last couple days, sleep well enough, let's not spend all this money on ex complex sensors, just know the right pieces of information to capture and care for us and for our individuals. The other challenge with a data-driven approach is we begin, to, we begin to see where the gaps are. We begin to see where the data isn't there today. How can we capture the right data at the right time and not go over the top, but start with working with our individuals in a well-cared-for environment to see what indicators we're seeing and then focus on those. That's where we will see innovation in the next generation come from, is understanding the people that we're working with and caring for them well and then building out on those mechanisms. The last piece is facilities. And Patrick and Terry spoke about the specialty hospital and about the research institute. We need institutions and facilities that provide a better um, path for some of these individuals. When we're talking about screening and sleep studies, and uh, Dr. Katz over in the corner does sleep studies with students, but it's hard for them to get to the facilities because they didn't have enough sleep the night before. So how can we provide the right facilities and the right pathways to get to those facilities so that we can leverage the knowledge that we've learned? Um, with that, I wanted to highlight solutions matter to people, to families, to communities. Um, we're taking a personalized approach to care. We need to scale the successes that we've seen. Um, at our table, and. Hopefully I'm not the person designated to come back up here and highlight what we learned. But at our table, one of the things we talked about was we've seen success at the center. How do we scale that? And it's a reoccurring theme across the conversations that I'm having. Um, and accelerating the vision of 21st century care. This idea of precision or customized medicine, it has its ebbs and flows. But how can we take the knowledge that we have about those we care for and what works well and how to invest well in our time, our energy, and our observation to care for individuals? Um, and so with that, thank you for your time. Apparently, I'm the one speaker who's not hitting my time mark, but it'll get us back on track. Um, with that, thank you for your time. <laughs>